Good morning and welcome to the Battles Within. Today we're going to be covering the last part of 1 Peter. It's actually 1 Peter chapter 5. We're going to be looking at verse 8 through the end of the chapter, which is all the way over to verse uh, 13. Let's read it and we'll pick out a few things we're going to talk about here. Verse 8, be sober, be vigilant, be, be vigilant. Because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour, whom resisteth steadfast in the truth in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in you, brethren, that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who have called us unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus, hath after that ye have suffered a while, made you perfect, establishing strength, and settled you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. By Savannah, a faithful brother unto you, as I suppose I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is the true grace of God wherein you stand. The church that is in that band Babylon, elect, together with you, salute you, and so doth Marcus my son. Greet ye one another with a kiss of charity. Peace be with you all that are in Jesus Christ. Christ Jesus, amen. So let's look at this. Some powerful, powerful verses in here. Uh, verse number eight, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. That is a powerful verse we hear, we memorize it. Because the devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Are you providing him a pathway? Are you feeding the lion? Are you putting out meat and flavoring to attract him to you? He said, be vigilant. You must be sober. That means be awake, be alert. You can't live your life in a way where you don't look around to see what your surroundings are. What's going on? Be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. He said, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. He says, but the God of grace who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, hath, after that ye suffered a while, made you perfect, established, strength, settled you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. He said here, listen, the devil is like a roaring lion, who's seeking whom he may devour. But even though you may suffer some in this lifetime, it's only for a short period of time. It's only for a short while, he says, because he said he, he will make you perfect, established, strengthened, settle you. See, persecution worketh patience, right? That's what he said. He says here that the God of all grace, who hath called us into his eternal glory through Jesus Christ, will also, after we suffer a little while on this earth, will make you perfect. There's three forms of sanctification. I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Three forms of sanctification. The first form of sanctification is called positional sanctification. When you are saved, you are sanctified. You're set apart. You're instantly saved. You're instantly a saint. That's, that, that is positional sanctification. The second form of sanctification is called progressive sanctification. Progressive sanctification is when, you know, when we're, as we're, as we are going through reading our Bible, studying and praying, we become more and more like Christ. We surrender more and more of our lives to him. By doing that, we become more progressively sanctified. We're not sanctified, not set apart. We're set apart, but now we're sanctifying ourselves daily so that we can perform more for God. And finally, in the end, we become perfect sanctification. That's what he says here. He said, uh, will you suffer for a while? Make you perfect. Establish, strengthen, and settle you to him glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. See, Peter says that if we settle it in our lives, if we know the devil's there, if we endure temptation for a time, that God will make us perfect one day. He finally closes out the reading of the book by telling that uh, Savannah's a brother, as I suppose I have written briefly, exhorting and testifying that this is true grace of God wherein you stand. The church that is in Babylon and relate together with you, salute you, and doth Marcus, my son, greet one another with a kiss of charity, be peaceful. Paul or Peter finishes out his book by saying, Listen, these are men of God who are out there doing God's will, doing God's service, and we need to trust them 
and, and the message goes out from them. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this time. I pray, Lord, help us to be uh, able to fight that roaring lion that comes in our lives. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you for your time and your attention today.